Today on Let's Talk About It, we are going to talk about that rebellious child of yours. What do you do when you're raising him in a Christian home and they still are making bad choices? And then later on, we will have my friend Erin Schubeck tell us about her journey of being a rebellious teenager. Today to tell you a story about when I was a little girl at about eight years old, I had an uncle, his name was Danny, and he was the rebel of the Deneen family. And there was a time frame in his life where he got saved, his life flourished, and he walked very tightly with the Lord. And during that time, he made sure that me and my three cousins always went to church. We went every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday, every revival in every vacation Bible school for about four or five years. That uncle, he kind of slipped away from the Lord and uh, my aunt, she made sure that us kids still went to church with her for about another two years. And then she kind of fell away. And of course they made us kids go to church on the van for a whole year, just so they probably could get a little bit of peace and quiet and get rid of us for a while. And during that time, I didn't always want to go. So I would purposely forget my church clothes because back then you didn't just wear whatever you wanted to church. Well, they caught on to that trick real quick and they picked me up a used dress from somewhere. It was so ugly. And I wore that dress to church one time, one time only. And I remembered my church clothes from that moment forward. But I tell you all this to say that that particular uncle about a month and a half ago passed away And when he was on his deathbed, he rededicated his life to the Lord. And he asked the Lord to forgive him for wasting his life. Well, guys, he didn't waste his life. He didn't. He sowed into me from the time I was eight. And I remember going to church until I was about 15, close to 16. And many things were sown into my life at that time. And eventually I got old enough to just buck up and say, I'm not going to church anymore. I don't want to do this. But I always felt the Lord was with me. I always had, I always knew he was around and was walking with me, even if I wasn't walking with him. And at the age of 23, I gave my life back to the Lord and I have walked with him ever since. And I've worked in ministry for the past 14 years. And my uncle is solely, solely responsible for those years of my life, sowing into me, making me do the things I didn't want to do for the greater good. And even though I probably walked with the Lord longer than he did because he backslid, but the Lord also made it um, available for me to see him give his life back to the Lord just moments before he, he passed away. So those things that are sown into you and for all the young people that are watching this show today, they do come to fruition and you don't forget And I say, if my uncle even had one jewel in his crown when he got to see the Lord that day, it has Teresa written all over it. So ladies, thanks for joining us again today. And as always, we are just three women with big opinions, always backed with a biblical standpoint. So hey, let's talk about it. Impact Productions, a multi-layer technology company providing on-site, online, and in-studio video services. Contact Impact Productions to capture your story. When it's time for a new roof, Champion Roofing is your best choice. We're a certified award-winning roofing contractor, meaning your roof is done right the first time. Call today. Champion Roofing, we're the solution. Welcome back to Let's Talk About It. And on today's show, our question of the day is, what do you do when you have a rebellious child in your home, when you think you've raised them with a Christian background? So, Teresa, let's start with you. Mm-hmm. 
That's a good question because <laughs> I've lived through that and yes. I don't really know what I did. They're all alive, so that, that was That's good. good. That, that <laughs> is good. And yeah. you do color your hair. I do color my hair. Um, a couple of things, because I'm still praying for one. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that he knows. Mm -hmm. And I have prayed for a long time for this particular kid that the Lord would just show up at the foot of his bed and make himself known in the dead mm -hmm. of the night. And I, I believe he's going to do something. Mm -hmm. and, and when I talk to this kid, and I do it intentionally talk about the Lord to this kid because he grew up in this church mm -hmm. and he knows. He knows the stories I'm sharing with him. So I'll pick a story that I know he knows. Mm. And he actually talks about it with me. So I know that he's not very far. Mm -hmm. But what I also know, and I'm not saying that he's rebellious, although he has done some pretty stinky things you know, <laughs> to me. But, um, well, I think we can be rebellious toward God mm -hmm. and not be rebellious doing bad things. The thing is, you know? yeah. he's never lost heart. He's always okay. been a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. He's never lost heart. He just needs his own experience. Mm. He needs to experience God in his own way. Right. Not because of how I did or how his dad did, but how he is going to experience it. And he maybe has not had that moment yet. Mm. But yeah. And Were I've, you a rebellious kid? Growing up? Depends on what you say rebellious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was. That's a yes. That's a big yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did things my own way. Okay. Um, always knowing that God was never very far away. Mm. Mm. I had to learn the hard way in some areas, but did I ever turn my back on God? I would say absolutely not. Mm -hmm. and, you know, absolutely not. But I do, I, honestly, I, I go back to being rebellious to God and being re rebellious to your parents are not always going to go hand in hand. No. You can still love God and be rebellious to your, I'm not, I mean, yes, I think it's wrong, but as we have talked, you, their brains are not fully formed. Exactly. What were you saying earlier about the, the yeah, that, frontal cortex? Yeah, or whatever it is that, that isn't really fully <clears throat> developed till you're 20 some years old. Mm -hmm. And yet we tell kids, you know, when they're, well, my daughter was 17 when she went to college. Right. Okay, you need to apply to college, figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life, yeah. make these serious mm -hmm. yeah. decisions that affect the rest of your life, yeah. and that section of your brain yeah. isn't even fully developed. Yeah. You're a child. These big right. decisions yeah. made. If I could go back and change anything it, for my kids, it would be to take that pressure off of them that they had to make a decision and they had to go to college mm -hmm. as right. soon as they graduated. I would never do that to mm -hmm. any of them again. Well, listen but. to this verse. Proverbs 22, 6, direct your children onto the right path. And when they are older, mm -hmm. they will not leave it. Yes. That really, really spoke to me. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. And when we're talking about this age thing, so we're maybe expecting something that they're just not. Not capable of. Right. Literally not capable right. of. Right. To yeah. make those right decisions. Yeah. Right. And how much pressure do we put on them then, mm -hmm. you know? So it just says direct your children on the right path. So I believe as we direct our children on the right path, as we pray over them, mm -hmm. as we speak Jesus into them, and then trust Jesus enough to have yes. his hand on it, yes. mm -hmm. that then it says when they're older, they will not leave it. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be sometimes patient to say, hey, yeah, maybe not right now. That's right. There are times we have to just completely step back. Right. Right. And let God. And I hate that as a mom. Oh, absolutely. It is the worst. Absolutely. It's the worst. Absolutely. It's the worst. It is the worst. Because, because when they're little, we, we can tell them when to eat. We tell them when to go to bed. We tell them who their friends are going to be. And then they get to be teenagers. And suddenly we're supposed to pull back and let them practice being adults. Right. Right. I actually had a young lady live with me for a year. And I did my very best with her. Um, she was a teenager. I did my very best. I brought her here. I, I sewed into her. I, she actually told me one day, she goes, no, you're the real deal. Mm. You're the real deal. Mm. But she left on a bad note, and mm. um, it made me feel like that year with her amounted to absolutely nothing. Mm. 
And the Lord has let me know multiple times that the seed was planted. Yes, that it was not well, for not nothing. a waste. If That's nothing right. else, you extended love to her that most people would not have done. Mm -hmm. Right. That was not for nothing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now I have a teenage son. He's seventeen. Is he seventeen? He is seventeen. Oh my and he's a lot sometimes mm -hmm. <laughs> in my mm -hmm. mind because mm -hmm. he's exactly like me. Mm -hmm. So that makes it hard. But one thing God has really spoke over my heart, do not speak out the things that you feel about him. Mm -hmm. You know, because there were times when I'd be like, he's horrible. Mm -hmm. I can't stand this about him. Or why does he act like that? And it just was just spewing all this ugliness. Mm -hmm. And God's like, stop doing that. That's right. Speak love over him, right. find the good things about him, and there are good things mm -hmm. about him, you know, and focus on that. <coughs> and then just make sure that you're not all about rule after rule mm -hmm. after rule, but you're about relationship with mm -hmm. him. Yes, I, I read a book years and years and years ago. I probably only had one kid at the time, but it said rules without relationship equals rebellion. Mm. Yeah. And I, that has mm. always stuck with me, has always stuck with me. Um, but last night, you know, I don't know if you know this, but my husband and my boys work for the same company. So oh, I didn't know that. They okay. work together. Okay. And my youngest one had a bad day, that terrible day. And hmm. John's like, well, I need to call my boy. I need to call my boy. I, it was a bad day, but I need to build him back up. Oh, so John kept that. trying to call him and he's not answering. So then John's saying, well, he must be upset. So finally, Justin calls back and he's like, are you okay? And he goes, yeah, I'm good. I'm fine. He goes, you know, it is what it is. You know, you're not wrong, you know? <laughs> uh. And, um, and John's like, well, you know, I just want to make sure you're okay. He says, you know, I love you. And he goes, and this just makes me want to cry. It just, cause I feel like they need to know they're loved mm -hmm. yeah. no matter what. And Justin says, well, I never doubted that. Oh. I never doubt that. Oh. Yeah, he knows that even you oh, know that yeah. he's loved. Yeah, and I've raised kids <clears throat> to say this, <laughs> guys. People can say we're crazy, and they will not be wrong. This mm -hmm. house is crazy, mm -hmm. but we are not a mean family. Mm -hmm. We are not mean. Yeah. If they say we're crazy, I'm not offended. <laughs> if they say we're mean, then I'm offended. That's right. Those yeah. are fighting you know? words. Yeah, yeah. I don't want my kids to be mean. Mm. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Jackson, um, you know, with him, you know, he's graduating this year yeah. and I don't know what his plans are. And so I've had to just pray, Lord, direct his steps. And yeah. like we've talked about, like, why do they already have to know? Right. Like this is a young age to already right. have that decision. I know for myself, I went into teaching. I got a teaching degree. I do not use it today. Hmm. You know, that's not where I want to be today. Hmm. But I didn't know that back then. Mm -hmm. I just knew I had to pick something. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's really hard and we put a lot of pressure. So mm -hmm. I really tried to, you know, we've talked about it. You know, you do have to ha have something, some mm -hmm. goals in life, but you know, I'm not trying to pressure you to go to college or whatever it is. Just, you know, let's walk out something. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for him too, the other thing that I really try to do is things that he enjoys, I try to make a priority. That's right. Yes. And that, that, that scripture in Proverbs, I actually heard explained one time, train up a child in the way they should go. We need to, yes, spiritually do that. But we also need to see what our children's bent is. Your bent wasn't teaching. If, you're, mm -hmm. if your parents had seen what your passion was or what your bent is what is it that you're good at is mm. it you know is jackson good at electronics or is he good at welding or you know and lead them in that way also right so that it doesn't waste the money and the time right in college doing something that you're never going to use not that it's a total waste right. i don't mean that right. but i think we do need to pay attention what are our kids good at right because we can see that right so parents out there if you think I'm tired, I'm mm -hmm. lost, I don't know what to do. There's a promise in scripture that mm -hmm. says train them and then one day they yes. will come back. And I believe that. So just train them, be patient and trust in the Lord because he is good and he is on your side. When it's time for a new roof, Champion Roofing is your best choice. We're a certified award-winning roofing contractor meaning your roof is done right the first time. Call today. Champion Roofing, we're the solution. This 
segment is brought to you by Harry's Construction, whose motto is, if you can dream it, we can create it. They are the kitchen and bath design experts, so call Harry's Construction for all your remodeling needs. Welcome back to Let's Talk About It. And on today's show, we have my friend Erin Schubeck with us. Hi. And she has a great story about being a rebellious teen. But before we get into that, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name's Erin Schubeck, and I am married to Drew Schubeck. And we have four little boys, eight, six, four, and two. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And it's a full time job, and then some. <laughs> yeah. And I have a teaching degree, so I was teaching for a while, but I decided to stay home and be a stay-at-home mom with my children for a while. And um, I was doing a little bit going into schools and, and working for pregnancy resource centers and yeah. talking for, you know, to the kids about waiting for sex till marriage as their best option and helping out with my kids' preschool room. and. So busy, 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 busy with different things, <laughs> yes. but technically stay at home mom. Yes. yes. So I know that when you were growing up, you grew up in a Christian home. Yes. But, you know, some things happened in life that caused some rebellion. So we just want to talk about how that all came about. And what do you think caused that rebellion when you were being raised by Christian parents? Right. I think that... Um because I was being raised in a Christian home, there Satan kind of comes after you a little bit harder. Yeah, and, for sure. And uh, you either, I think if you also have a big call on your life, I mm. think that Satan's gonna come after you pretty hard too. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I actually was, what the main thing I think started my rebellion was I, I got into a relationship with somebody that I should not have been in a relationship with and it started progressing and getting serious at age 14 and 15 years old, right. which is, you know, scripture warns you to not awaken love too early and I did not guard my heart and so I was in this relationship thinking I was going to marry this person and wow. then I got broken up with and that crushed me. And I remember being very, very depressed from that. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of spiraled into a hard heart where, okay, now I'm not gonna be the one that gets hurt anymore. I'm gonna get in, I'll, I'll just get into another relationship and, and they won't hurt me, I'll hurt them. And it was just this horrible cycle of getting into a relationship, getting out of the relationship, getting in you know, to another one, getting out mm -hmm. of it. And, and all the while God was just waiting saying, hey, I'm still here, I wanna heal you, I'm ready when you are, and right. I just kept saying, I've gone too far. And that was another thing that was Satan did to me, he made me think that I had gone too far, mm. wow. that yeah. I could not be forgiven because I knew better and I did it anyways, mm. and that was one of the biggest lies mm -hmm. that I feel like I believed. Mm. And that really held me back from c turning back to the Lord for a long time. Mm. Wow, that's a powerful statement. Yes, like, it is. So that shame of like, well, I knew better, yes. mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and then still made those decisions. And you feel like, well, if I've already gone too far that I can't turn back, then I'm just going to keep forging mm -hmm. forward. Right. Mm -hmm. Doing right. the same On thing. My own. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what got you flipped around? Well, I feel as though my parents were powerful prayer warriors for me and they, they would also continually try to point me in the right direction. They would make me go to church. They'd, you know, they'd have that worship music on in the background. <laughs> they'd, they'd speak truth to me even when I didn't want to hear it and even when I didn't believe it. And um, I would be lying to them about the party that I was going to and hiding things and they knew, but at the same time, they, they tried their best to continue to give me, you know, some freedom. Because at this point I'm like 18 years old, about to leave the house and I'm going to college. So they have to start at some point stepping back, praying over me and trusting God to take over. Yeah. And so I think that the power of, of my parents' prayers are really what brought me back. And um, I remember when I was, they say that your brain's fully developed around 25 years old. We were talking we about that. We, we were, were just saying yes. that. Yes. We were yes. talking about that. That's, it's so <clears throat> true because it was like a light bulb went off. It was like, mm. oh, wow. Like everything that I had done started to come into the light and I started to see truth and I started to have wisdom and I started mm. to like, it was like all these different pieces came together, mm. but it was around 24, 25 years old. Mm. 
And um, I had already met my husband and I remember we got married <clears throat> and we were living in Connecticut. And I thought, you know, well, once I, I've been in these relationships and, um, you know, nothing is going to affect me now. I'm married, so everything's going to be perfect. Mm. Well, things in our marriage were not perfect because, you know, we had both had relationships before marriage that had gone too far and, it, and we were affected by that. Mm -hmm. So I remember living in Connecticut with my husband and feeling like I thought everything was going to be perfect now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm. And um, it wasn't. And so yeah. I, I started going back to a church. I ended up getting baptized. And, and rededicating my life to the Lord. Mm. And that's whenever my healing started happening mm. was through that time frame after marriage, whenever I was totally broken because I was having, we were having issues in our mm -hmm. marriage and I, and I didn't expect that. Yeah. And um, God just kept pursuing me. Yeah. And that's, that's Isn't something. That's great that he just mm -hmm. keeps yeah. pursuing yeah. I think that young people do not realize that what they are doing today mm -hmm. affects their life for the rest of their life. Right. It, it does impact you in your married life, Absolutely. what you do on that date today. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't think it, it will, especially if you're as teenagers, I feel like it's, it's like this, uh, I'm untouchable. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I mm -hmm. you know, live for today, pray for tomorrow, whatever this mentality of just, you know, what's here and now makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, it absolutely affects, we're supposed to guard our hearts because whenever you are with someone, you give them your whole mm -hmm. heart. They're either going to give it back whole mm -hmm. or they're going to give it back in pieces. That's and right. And you've got to mm -hmm. figure out how to get it healed again. And mm -hmm. it keeps yeah. happening. And so, yeah, wow. So, you know, you went through this and I love that um, you said like your parents just prayed and that they just prayed mm -hmm. and that they just prayed mm -hmm. because there was nothing else that they could do. And, you know, sometimes that's all we yes. can do. And we mm -hmm. have to, mm -hmm. it's hard as parents to let it go right. and let God, because we want to have control. But right. earlier you talked about that you have four boys now yes. and, you know, things aren't better than they were when you were a teenager. Right. They're worse. Right. So what are some things you would say like this is, you know, I'm raising them in a Christian home and these are some things that I either took from my parents or that I'm learning to do because now I have these four <clears throat> boys. Right. I think that um, talking about important topics in the light on a regular basis with kids, mm. I feel like is very important. Um, I feel like that's, I'm not necessarily scared. I, what I've learned is, is that what Satan meant for evil. So while I was in my rebellious sinning stage, my parents trust the Lord enough to let me go through it. And God redeemed everything mm -hmm. that Satan tried to steal. Mm -hmm. right. God actually used the exact same thing that I was sinning in to turn around and now help others to not sin in that area. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So having this trust in the Lord, that even if my kids fail, even they if will. my kids fail, and, and they, will. they will, yes, right? They're going to fail mm -hmm. in an area, and it might be huge, right? Right. God has a plan for that, mm. even if it wasn't his initial plan. Mm. Right. He can redeem that and turn that around for good right. however he wants to. Yeah. And we trust that he does that. We prophesy that into existence even if we don't see it. Mm -hmm. We prophesy what we want to see happen. And that's my goal is to remember when they do fail, and they're going to, that God's going to turn this for good. He might actually be using all this stuff that they're going through, might actually shape and, and be exactly what they're called to do in the future to help others with. Mm -hmm. Right. So that gives hope in the midst of trials with right. children. Because <laughs> that's even, like you said, what he did with you, how now you, you went to speak about those right. things that mm -hmm. affected you exactly. as a teenager. Now you speak that into other teenagers. Right. To show them. Satan wanted to destroy me through sex, and now I'm using waiting for sex as a tool to help teens to wait on their value and their worth, and so they don't have to go through that. So I just, it's funny looking back now how Satan thought that he won. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But he did. He doesn't. Yep. He does not he win. He doesn't win. Right. In and he end. uses our story regardless of what we That's think. That's right. Yep. And he will use it to redeem, to restore, and to move people where he wants them. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's a great thing. So no matter what you've done, no matter what happened when you were a teenager, don't ever think that God can't use you today because mm -hmm. he can. When we come back, we will have our tip to share with you. Hey y'all, it's Dano. Check this out.
got some exciting news. Dano on the Counter, Season 2 on Fox 8 at 8 a.m. Make sure you check it out. So today's tip is to get your children reading. I was a teacher a few years ago and I came to really understand how important it is that your children are reading and that they know how to read. You see, reading comes into play in pretty much all subjects, even math. Reading allows children to use their imagination, take a break from electronics, and promotes healthy brain development, and it builds vocabulary. When you read with your child, this builds a strong bond between the two of you. You are providing them with your time, you provide comfort, and you are providing a time of relaxation. Reading helps improve concentration and memory. It reduces stress and allows those creative juices to flow. So if at all possible, schedule this into your daily schedules, whether you read to them or they read on their own. Daily time spent reading has so many wonderful benefits. And the great thing about reading is there are so many great books to choose from. If you have a child who doesn't like to read, find books that may pique their interest. If they like sports, find books about sports. If they like cars, find a book about a car. They're out there, I promise you. Do make sure that if they are reading it on their own, it's a book that isn't too difficult for them. We want this to be an enjoyable time and then become a habit. If you aren't sure what those books would be, ask your, your child's teacher for some direction. It's important that we make reading fun for our children and something that they want to do more of. So to end today, I want to give a few of my favorite children books that I would highly recommend. Some are ones you may read to them and others they could maybe read themselves. For example, the Give a Mouse a Cookie collection is a lot of fun for those younger readers by Laura Numeroff. The Bearstein Bears are excellent and teach great values. The Eric Carle books are also a great choice, like The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Love You Forever by Robert Munch is an absolute favorite and it may bring some tears when you read it. Some good chapter books are Charlotte's Web, the Junie B. Jones series, anything by Roald Dahl like James and the Giant Peach or BFG, and an absolute favorite of mine is Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats and Nim. This book even has a movie that can be watched after you finish the book. This is just a small list of what's out there. There are so many wonderful books that you can choose from. Even check out Ollie's if you get a chance because there are so many great books there at great prices. We as parents just need to make sure our kids are taking the time to open up a book and read. And sometimes we may have to push them to open that book, but the benefits will truly be evident. So let us know on our Facebook page, Let's Talk About It, one of your favorite children's books. And we can't wait to get together again next week with another tough question on Let's Talk About It. Mm -hmm.